When I made these campaigns yesterday, I promised you I would analyze them. So today, January 6, 2015, it's one day later, I'm analyzing the campaigns I made for my sales offers in the US, UK, Canada, New Zealand, and Australia. So these are the two campaigns I went through and analyzed. In the other section, I go through and optimize these. So I'm now taking a look each of these campaigns, figuring out where I can optimize them. In the other campaign, it was a little harder to figure out exactly where I should optimize, but this campaign is proving to be pretty easy to see where I'm getting low cost post engagements. And I can of course get a second opinion if I sort by day, but the main thing I wanna see is where am I getting the lowest cost post engagements? Because what I want to know is where am I getting my best value out of my ads? So today, nothing that low so far. The day is young still. So yesterday, I did very good in the coupons and the business. Now take a look at this. These engagements are literally a tenth of the price of the most expensive engagements. So that's what's really cool about doing this strategy is that I'm able to zoom in on these. Now the coupons I wouldn't have thought would have been so cheap. And the Udemy desktop only I would have thought would have been the best. So if you look, these results are quite surprising compared to what you might predict. So what I'm going to do now is turn off the worst. The Udemy desktop goes, the search engine optimization goes. So I'm cutting out the bottom part of the worst of these. Now what I wanna figure out is exactly what works the best out of these existing top campaigns. I don't wanna cut anything that might be optimizing and starting to work really well. So today, none of them have got that great of engagement. What I want to keep an eye on are the ones that have just done terrible so far today. The entrepreneur can go. I wanna make sure that I'm getting those very worst of them out. So I get these out today and then I go back to lifetime. And oddly enough, you can see I then turned off two that did the best yesterday. So I'll leave them back on for now. And then I can check out these and I'm going to cut anything that is above the 30 cent area. Unless it's doing really good today, but so far it's not. So I'm going to cut all these that are not at least at 30 cents. Now, the question is, I could leave this one. Now, I'm getting a lot of impressions on this one. What I want to do then are see where my website clicks are potentially going. So I go in and check out, I just customize columns. I go remove the things I don't need. I don't need the reach frequency yet. I'll take the clicks and the click through weight might be helpful. I'll take the cost per thousand impressions, cost per click. And then what I want to see are specific engagement metrics. So I wanna see page engagement, page likes, and then I wanna go down to website clicks. And then I'd like to also see website conversions. So this way I can find if there's anything I've missed that's doing really good and somehow I didn't notice it. So I scroll over here on the right, and you can see if I sort by clicks then, I can go on the cost per click and see exactly where my lowest and most expensive clicks are. So the cheapest I'm getting is in the consultant. So I definitely, well, that's interesting. I'm not getting as much engagement, but that was one click. So now I take off placement. I take no placement. So then I can just take straight individual clicks in here by most of the clicks. So I'm actually getting cheap clicks I'm getting the cheapest clicks in the coupons, which is how I'm getting the lowest cost engagement. And then I'm getting low cost clicks in the post, the marketing, the consultant, and the technology. All of the clicks are tending to be under 40 cents, except in the desktop only, you can see the clicks much more expensive there. So all of the clicks are low, or below 40 cents at least, but down here, what I wanna see then is what kind of action Am I getting out of these? So I'm getting really good action on the business. I'm getting page engagement, website clicks, and conversions. So what am I getting on the Udemy desktop? Well, I only got eight, six, and four on that. 
So I wanna now sort by website conversions to make sure I don't necessarily turn off something that looked bad, but actually is performing good. So I've kept Twitter on and that's working pretty good. So down here then I'm able to look and see what all the actions I'm getting. The website conversions are a very good sign of genuine interest. I've got $8 and I got 12 people actually converted into viewing my website. And these down here, same thing. So I just wanna make sure I don't turn off anything that doesn't look like it's working good on the surface but actually is working good in the background. But it seems the Twitter, the business, the coupons, and the gratitude and the technology, and maybe this one too. So I'm going to look through here and turn off everything except these top five. So now I want Twitter, coupons, business, technology, and gratitude. And the marketing looks good, so I'll have to double check the marketing. Now the marketing clicks are pretty good, seven, but I haven't got actually many website conversions or website clicks on those. And the marketing, even though it says it's looking good for page engagement on there. I haven't got much actual return, so I'll keep that on there. And the only thing I don't notice much action on is the entrepreneur. Hardly any website conversions. Some have probably taken the course and a decent number of engagements and clicks. So this is, it can be a bit murky in here, exactly what you do turn on and don't turn off. You see I've got seven. The entrepreneur has been horrible today. So I'm actually going to turn that off now and refresh it. And then I go to today. You can see the entrepreneur has been just terrible today, 328 and got almost nothing done on it. So even though these are some of the lower cost ones today, this is just how today's going. I've then optimized for what worked yesterday because I have the most action yesterday. And you know what, I can just leave the entrepreneur on and there. So I've went through and I went from 15 and I'm down to seven. So I'll get more data over the course of today. But the nice thing, you can say I went from $75 a day in this one campaign and now I'm down to much less. I'm down to $35 a day. And I've screened out the most of the worst performing in here. So that's what I want to do in the next campaign also. So I'll close this report and jump over to this website clicks. And the website clicks look like they're going to be even easier to optimize. But again, I'll want to view the report and sort it by cost per click. So some of these clicks have been a lot cheaper than others. The Udemy desktop has been a nightmare. Business training, the coupons has not worked well in the website clicks, which is interesting. So now what I do, I take a look at the reports because I wanna pause about half more of those. And it can be a pain to customize the columns every time. I can make specific reports. But for now it's easiest to just put I want what I want in real quick. So I just take out these things I don't need. And then I put in the things I do want. So page engagement, website clicks, and then website conversions cost per website conversion. Those are just the things I want. Now I scroll over and I'll take the placement off to start. And now what I want to see is, where's my cost per click at? So the Udemy desktop, just a nightmare, $1.60. What's my lowest cost per click? 25 cents in technology, that's pretty sweet. Now what's cool is on the people that have visited my website, they are coming back to it pretty easily, I, even though I've shown very few impressions, I'm getting a very nice click-through rate on that. So I want to look through here and figure out, are there any real good opportunities I have? I can go on placement now and sort cost per click, and then scroll down this way and see the technology news feed tends to work the best, and the Facebook page admins tend to work the best. The Udemy desktop is the worst, and it seems I'm hardly getting any clicks at all on the desktop, but Facebook's hardly spent any money trying to get me clicks on the desktop either. So the placement seems that mobile is where all the action's coming from. Now I could sort by country too, and scroll down and see, oh, it turns out 
in New Zealand, I'm able to get really cheap clicks for three cents or six cents each out of New Zealand. So what I want to be able to do then is try some campaigns just in New Zealand and get low cost clicks out of there because I've gotten some excellent customers out of New Zealand also. And it's a small country so I can have a big impact in a smaller area that way. And now I wanna look at the most expensive. Online spenders in GB, $2 per click, ouch. Definitely not a good opportunity there. Udemy desktop in Canada, also very expensive. So go through here and pause some of these things that aren't coming out very good. I take off the delivery again and now I check my overall cost per click. So online spenders, way too much. And is that spenders or spenders active? Both of them too much, out. And the coupon's already paused and since the engagement's going good, I don't really need the coupons in there also. Now what else is costing a lot? The email subscribers look alike. That's costing 48 cents each, so it's still pretty stiff. The Bitcoin, that's costing a lot, so, and it's not necessarily very related. And so that's the trick with these, is to get them related. I tried to see if that could be a really cheap category, but since I don't do much with Bitcoin in particular, and I'm getting 44 cents per click, not necessarily worth it. Now what I wanna do is check out website conversions. So obviously people have been to my website willing to click on it and come back again. The marketing in the Bitcoin actually were proving to be the best, so I might turn the Bitcoin back on. For the Jerry Banfield website visitor, easiest to get to come back. So the Bitcoin and the Bitcoin marketing, and these bottom five are probably the only ones I wanna keep on. So I'll turn the Bitcoin back on, and the Udemy mobile, it's not showing up. Most people aren't going to the website, but they are going straight they are clicking straight on the courses, so I will keep that on too. So then I will turn off the others. So the email subscribers, online advertising. And so then I will just keep these six on because these three are looking good. The email subscribers look alike, 48 cents a click, and it's a look alike, so it's not exactly ideal. The technology is getting low cost clicks, and I definitely want to keep my low cost clicks on. And the online advertising, only 32 cents a click, but I'm not getting a whole lot in the way of people actually going to the website out of that. They're engaging with the post, but they're not necessarily going to the website. Still, the marketing is looking really good out of that. And the Udemy Mobile and the Bitcoin, a little bit more expensive. So I theoretically could keep on the online advertising, but when Facebook here is telling me it's 60, three cents a click, I probably, that's simple to just turn that off. So what I ended up doing is looking through all these reports to end up just turning off everything that was above 50 cents a click. Now what I want to see is are there any areas where I can consistently get cheaper clicks. So I go to today and look at my results and most of the ones that are off are much higher and it's possible none of these will actually work out very well. What I want to do is have an entire day worth of data and then I'll decide. What I do know for sure at this point is I've went from 13 ad sets which turn out to be $65 a day and I've dropped that down to 6 ad sets which is $30 a day. So I've already looked by the data at what's working the best. I've paused the worst performing parts of this so then I can allow myself the opportunity to get much lower cost clicks. So in both of these, I've focused on what's working the best and I've cut out the bottom 50, 60% of the campaign ad sets in each of these campaigns. And this will give me the opportunity to get more data on the ones that are working and see which of the ad sets are set up to be the best ongoing opportunity. And finally, you can look at two clear results I've got out of this. One on my Facebook page and one on my website. So you can see on my Facebook page, I now have a nice post when people come straight in to view my page. I have a nice post that has my courses for sale and has hundreds of people engaging on it. 
a good post to be able to use for sales. And I've also got this post, which got gigantic amounts of engagement. And then the benefit of that is, take a look at my website now, 9K shares. When you come to my website and your first impression is that 9,000 people have shared my website, that's automatically pretty good. So thank you for watching this lecture with me. I hope I've clearly shared exactly what you can do to set up new ad campaigns and then optimize the existing ads you have to get the best results. And the idea is you do this repeatedly. So if I'm not happy with the cost per click I get out of these ad campaigns, I build new ones using what I learned from the ones before and try this again and again and again. And I've set it up so I have a guaranteed positive result. When people come to my website and see 9K shares, that's easy to impress with. They say, wow, who has 9K shares on their website? That's pretty sweet. It's one of those unconscious first impression things along with all these followers I have too. That's one of those things that establishes me as having a big audience online. So using these ads, if you can use your ads in a way like this to get you a guaranteed good result and you can continually refine them to give you the best opportunities based on the data, then you can count on having great results in the long term. Thank you for watching this and I will continue to work with you to update you on how these campaigns go and what new campaigns I make in the future.